Matthew chapter 15 is where we're going to start and and uh, plant ourselves for the next couple of weeks. I I, I uh, kind of alluded on Wednesday night and uh, through noonday prayer this week um, on a subject that um, I'm going to be sharing at least for the next eight weeks as the Lord leads. Uh, the Lord just kind of blasted me with this uh, subject um, and has really uh, re-emphasized it. Uh, he kind of blasted me with it before the holidays and has just kind of re-emphasized it through the holidays. And uh, I was really, I really had a discussion uh, with the Lord about it because I said, we already talked about this. We've talked about it a lot. And uh, I said, we really don't need to go through it again. Um, and he said, oh, yeah, we do. And uh, so we're going to be talking over the next eight weeks or so. I don't want to lock myself into a time frame because the Lord can extend it, right? And we want to be in the center of his will and not our will. Um, and so we're going to spend some time dealing with the subject of faith. Um, and, and when we were earlier on in the book of James, we talked about faith. And we talked about faith without works is dead. And we talked about having faith and, and living lives of faith. But I still believe that um, and, and, and have this burden that a lot of believers have problems with that word faith. And, and not just with the word faith, but putting that faith into action and um, living out their faith and living out their faith and trust in the Lord and in His Word, uh, believing His Word and the promises of Scripture. Um, and, and as we get into this, um, especially today and next week, we're going to talk about desperate faith. Desperate faith. I want to share with a story before I, I get into this. Um, I, I was asked by the... Uh, I, I had set up a meeting with the president of um, Doctors West Hospital. And uh, the meeting was had nothing to do with church and had nothing to do with, with uh, religion at all, had nothing to do with faith. And I went into the meeting not intending to share my faith, at all, and it was just a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the president. I, I felt quite honored. Uh, he called me and asked me to come over and meet with him. I didn't even know the guy, Richard. I had never met the guy before. I mean, when he first became president of Doctors West Hospital, he called all the pastors in the area and treated us to a lunch. And uh, was just he and and in that meeting, I mean, I didn't even meet him face to face then, uh, but in that meeting, he shared with all of the pastors. He says, "I know the reputation of Doctors West Hospital. You you all are ch chuckling, so you all know the reputation of Doctors West Hospital, too." Um, but he says, I know the reputation of Doctors West Hospital, and I want to change it. And I want to work to change it. And I want to change also to make Doctors West Hospital a teaching hospital as well. And he said, the reason why I've called you pastors is that you're on the front line. He said, I want, if you see anything that is not right here, I want you to let me know, okay? And uh, so there were a couple of things that, that I didn't see right, and I had let the chaplain office know. And all of a sudden, I'm in the principal's, I mean the president's office. And um, we're sitting down. He offered me a cup of coffee, and I accepted. And, Knowing that you all know that I love coffee, so I accepted. And and uh, he 
starts to talk to me about the reason why I'm there. And I said, wait a minute, because I felt led to do this. And I, I'm thinking, I'm arguing the whole time spiritually. I'm arguing that God, this I don't know where this guy stands spiritually. I don't know where he stands in his walk with the Lord. But I felt led to open that meeting with a word of prayer. So I stopped him mid-sentence and I said, Sir, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I don't know where you stand spiritually, but I feel led to start with a word of prayer. And so we started the meeting with a word of prayer. And as I'm praying, I just all of a sudden felt led to pray for him specifically and pray a lot about his personal life. And I started praying about some personal things that I knew not, because I, I don't know the man, and I'm praying about his personal life. And, and as I'm praying, and we finished prayer, tears were rolling down his face. And he shared with me, our meeting took a whole different turn. And he shared with me that he was really struggling professionally and spiritually in a lot of different areas that I prayed for. And he was not a believer. And I had an opportunity to witness to him and share with him at that moment. Um, he did not accept Christ. I still don't know where he stands in his relationship. And I've not talked to him since. But the opportunity was there because he was in some desperate situations and the Lord allowed me to share. And and the thing that, that is interesting that I think will relate to this story from this scripture is that if we, if we, if we limit ourselves to within these walls and our traditions and our own belief system, we will miss opportunities of people who are desperate. Who are desperate and need the Lord. Because we have people all around us today who are desperate. Who are crying out. Look, look at this passage. And I want you to listen to every word. And, and hopefully you've brought your Bibles or your electronic devices. And, and you at home don't just sit there in your lazy boy and think, oh, I don't have to open my Bible at all because no one's looking at me. Open your Bible. Get out your phone. Open it up. And, 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 and read along because... I want you to listen to every word of this text. Follow along as if it were vitally important. Starting with the first verse, which is usually skimmed over. But, it's, but it is important. Jesus left that place and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that ter territory came to him and began to shout, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. Then his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away. She keeps shouting behind us. Wait a minute. The, the woman didn't say anything about them, did she? Isn't it funny how people like to be important just because they're around somebody who's important? Send her away. She keeps shouting behind us. Huh. She hasn't said anything about the disciples. She didn't say anything about Peter, James, or John. She said, Lord, son of David. And now they're crying. She's shouting behind us. Really? Jesus responded, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the nation of Israel. 
She came to him, bowed down, and said, Lord, help me. Jesus replied, it's not right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Wow. She said, you're right, Lord. But even the dogs eat scraps that fall from their master's tables. Then Jesus answered her, woman, you have strong faith. What you wanted will be done for you. At that moment, at that moment, at that moment, her daughter was cured. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the time of worship. We thank you for your word that's already been shared. We thank you, Lord, for, for the ability that we have, the privilege that we have, that we get to come into your presence, that we get to study your word, that we get to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, that we get to fellowship together uh, through the, the technology, through uh, being in person that we get to through the blood of Jesus Christ be of one mind, be of one spirit, be united together. Lord, that we get to have, have the spirit poured down upon us. So Father, pour out your spirit. Let it flow over us as the oil that was poured out on Aaron from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Let it pour and flow over us and and, and Lord, let it, let it permeate our hearts. Let it permeate our minds. Let it permeate our bodies so that we are different than how we entered into this worship service today. And we won't fail to praise you and give you all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. There, there, there are many times that this text has been preached on Mother's Day. Because we have a tendency to take texts about women and apply them to women. But, but, if, but if, if we only see this woman from her gender alone, I think we miss some significant points for our consideration. Okay, There are many times that we get too focused on our own kind of belief, our own kind of worship culture, and what is flying over the door of the building that we miss the, the broader picture that God has for the kingdom. You, you see, if, if, if we see this woman as only a loving mother who is desperate for her daughter, even though that's what she is, if that's all we see about the text, we, we will do an injustice to the text. It's obvious that even though she wasn't a follower of Jesus, she had been an observer of him. And maybe there are people like that in your life. They may not be a follower of Jesus, but they are watching Jesus in you. They, they are observing Jesus in you. You see, this Jesus, or this woman knew who he was. Lord, son of David, is what she called him. That's a messianic greeting that normally a Jew would give to the Messiah. She is not Jewish at all, yet she is familiar enough with the lingo that she speaks Jesus' language. She, she had been an observer of him. She knew exactly who he was, and she was desperate enough to come into his presence. Desperate enough to cross the line of her tradition. It, you, know, you know something? God, God can't do anything with you until you get desperate. As long as you say, I'm not going to that, to that, uh, I'm not going to that interdenominational church because I'm Baptist. I'm not going over to that interdenominational church because I was raised church of God. I'm not going because I'm white or I'm not going because I'm black. Let me tell you something. When you get into enough trouble, you will go 
anywhere to get anything from anybody who will help you get through it. It's, it's like dialing 911. I, I don't call 911 and say, please send me a, par a white paramedic. No, send me a paramedic that can help me right now. I don't care if if I can't pronounce their name. I want I want them to be able to help me right when they come through my door. I'm not going to ask them when they pull up, are you a Christian? I don't want you to put a needle in my arm if you're not a Christian. I, I, I'm going to ask them, do you have some oxygen? Because I need some help right now. We have to understand that desperate situations require a desperate response. And this morning, I, I, I want to talk for a moment about desperate faith. I mean desperate faith. Not passive, religious, superficial, traditional, uh, self-righteous, pharisaical. I, I want to talk to you about desperate faith. The kind of faith that will cross lines and break rules and make you reach out and cross generations and break down barriers. Whatever you have to do to get a breakthrough. You, you have to have that level of desperate Faith. You have to be radical, and you may have to, you may even have had to live a, li a while to know what desperate faith is. Because sometimes, if you haven't had, if you haven't lived a while, you haven't been desperate. You see, when my kids were little, they weren't desperate. Because they were discipled. They had everything they needed, just like my father just shared about me. They, they had everything they needed. The milk was on the table, the bread was in the cupboard, the peanut butter was on the shelf, and it was our job to make sure they weren't desperate. Maybe when they grew up and got out on their own, they, that's when they got a little desperate because those bills start coming in your name the rent bill comes in your name and all of the sudden you get a revelation that milk just doesn't appear in the refrigerator. So maybe, maybe I shouldn't leave it out on the counter for three days. I mean, let's be real. Are there any desperate people listening this morning? You've, you've gone through some things. You understand some things. You've endured some things. And you need God to help you get through some things right now. You didn't come to church this morning because you have a cute dress on. You didn't come to church because you got some new clothes for Christmas and you want to show them off. You didn't come to church this morning just to see what's going on. You're not logged on this morning because you don't need to wash your clothes and you don't have anything else to do. The kids aren't pulling on you, but you're desperate enough to be engaged in God in a way that's different from other people. Some of your family members may be playing in other parts of the house. Some may be sleeping this morning because they stayed up too late New Year's Eve and they didn't catch up on their sleep yesterday. And so they may be sleeping in this morning. Some may have gone shopping. But as for you, you're stuck in front of the screen because you're looking for a word from the Lord because you're desperate this morning desperate I, I want to go through and give you some things that desperate faith what desperate faith isn't today desperate faith isn't passive passively blaming God for your own choices and mistakes because you see a lot of times we blame God for things we did ourselves Now I I just will I will just pre warn you I I will just pre warn you I'm not looking for a whole lot of shouting today. Okay, uh, I will also pre warn you that if you don't have your steel toes on, uh, steel toe boots on, mm, you might 
hurt a little bit today. Because you see, a lot of times we blame God for things we did ourselves. I, I, I've been believing God for three years to get me out of debt and He hasn't come through for me yet. Well, He didn't get you into debt. Let's, let's first assume responsibility, huh? That your behavior brought you to the place that you're in and stop blaming God like God failed you for not being codependent in your cycle of dysfunction. Sometimes we use faith because we want God to enable us to remain dysfunctional. And He doesn't answer us a word because until we fix our habits, He's not going to pour more resources into a dysfunctional system. Oh, oh I know I'm going to lose a few people, and okay, but just hang in there. But I'm just sick and tired of people saying, I tithed and it didn't work. I gave a couple Sundays. I threw a 20 in the plate and I was expecting a million dollar breakthrough. Why would God give you a million dollars when you ran through a thousand dollars? God wants you to be faithful over a few things before He makes you ruler over many. I knew I wouldn't get much shouting, but that's okay. Desperate faith isn't sitting idly by in despair, waiting for a divine miracle to replace human effort. I believe in God for a job while sitting in my recliner with a remote control in my hand. I believe in God. I prayed three times for a job and the Lord ain't answered me. I don't understand what's wrong. God isn't going to answer you. Oh, don't get me wrong. He's got the job out there. But faith without works is dead being alone. You've got to get out there and get your hustle on. You've got to get out there and make it do what it do. And if nobody hires you, you got to make t-shirts, candles, cookies, hot dogs. I don't care what you got to do. You got to be about your father's business. The Bible says whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And if you're not doing anything, you're not giving God anything to prosper. No, he's not going to come into your living room, Boaz. Is, Boaz is never going to ring the doorbell while you're sitting in the house in your robe and your hair up in curlers. My Boaz is coming. You better hope he don't. If he comes and rings your doorbell and you're looking like that, he's going to leave. He's going to get out of there as quickly as he can because you're not ready for Boaz. If you're not Ruth, don't expect Boaz. Desperate faith is not manipulating God to serve our agenda. Oh, I want you to help me do this. I want you to help me do that. It's not about getting God to serve your agenda. It's about getting you to serve God's agenda. When you get on God's agenda, you're, you're already being blessed. Instead of creating something separate over here and asking Him to bless something that He didn't create, what you really want to do is find out what He's doing. I've told leaders for years, leaders, uh, leader, church leaders for years, here, here at this church, here in other churches, in leadership training and mentoring pastors, a lot of time what we do is we schedule events, we plan things out, we create things, and then ask God to bless what we're doing. When what we should do is ask God what He's doing and do what God is doing because the blessing is already on the purpose of God. Oh, if we did that, we'd have a whole lot less headaches. If we did that, 
We wouldn't worry about money and what the and what the budget was and what the finances were because God has already provided for his purpose. Okay, I'll move on. Desperate faith is not rejecting God's decision because of personal pain. To say I've got desperate faith, I'm just believing God that mama's going to live. I'm just believing that she's going to live. I understand that. I understand that. I've been there. Not with my mother. Not with my mother, praise the Lord. I know my mother's watching. Not with my mother, but with other family members. I understand that. But you see, we have to understand that God is still God. And you have to pray the kind of prayer that says, Lord, I want my mama to live as long as she possibly can. But if you decide that you're going to take her, I have to trust you. It hurts, but I trust you. I don't understand it, but I trust you. I'm in pain, but I trust you. You know what's best for me. Just give me the strength to stand what hurts in my life. I faced death with a loved one and told the Lord, Lord, I want my loved one to keep on living. But if you give me 80, I'm going to ask for 90. If you give me 90, I'm going to ask for 100. If you give me 110, I'm going to ask for 120. Kind of sound like an auctioneer. Because I'm greedy. I've got a greedy love. When I love you, I love you. I mean, I really love you. And there are times when, when, when I wish I wasn't like that. Because when I love you, I love you like crazy. I want you to stay forever and ever and ever and ever. And I had to learn that keeping people when they're in pain and when they're suffering and when they're hurting is not a matter of great faith. It's a great cruelty. took me a while for me to say I'd rather for me to be in pain and them be in peace. You have to grow a while to get to that. To get from them to be in pain so that I can be in peace. It takes a while to grow from that. And, and I just want to tell you what desperate faith is is not because a lot of people come to church, they really think that faith is like witchcraft. That you can make it do what it do. That you can make it do whatever you want it to do. That you can just believe God until you believe somebody else's husband away from them. I believe in God. I know he's married, but I'm just believing God. He's not supposed to be with her. And he's not supposed to be married to her. He's not happy. I'm just believing God. I'm just believing God. G-A-W-D. I'm just believing God. I'm just believing God. I don't care how much you believe in God for my wife. You can't have her. That's a lying spirit from the pits of hell. That's a demon spirit, and we got to cast that out because she's already taken. So there ain't no need in you believing God for no Dawn Elizabeth Watts. She's mine. Believe God for your own wife. Get out there and do the hard work for your wife. Leave mine alone. But it's true. We take faith and we manipulate it to make it do what we want it to do. And that's not it. The thing that, that made this woman desperate is that she had a devil to fight. Is, is there anybody in here that has a devil to fight? What, what about you that are at home this morning? Do you have a devil to fight? I mean, a, 
a nasty, old, relentless, vicious, wicked, tenacious devil to fight. You, you have a devil to fight, and you can't afford to have a cute religion because you have a devil to fight. You can't afford to be steeped in tradition because you got a devil to fight. And whatever it takes to beat that devil out of your house and out of your life and out of your body and out of your mind and out of your emotions and out of your family and out of your children and out of your circumstances, you got a devil to fight. Because that's why you come to church when you're dressed up and you come to church when you're dressed down and you come to church when your nails are done and you come to church when your nails are broken off because you're a desperate woman. You're a desperate man. You, you have a desperate fight. And, and if they don't tell you to praise the Lord, you're going to praise the Lord anyhow because you're desperate. If they don't tell you to clap your your hands, you're going to clap your hands anyway because you're desperate. There's no need in sitting beside somebody that's not desperate because they're not going to like you. So if you're at home, you may need to move to the other side of the room. They're, they're going to get on their nerves. You keep jumping up. You keep making noise. You keep crying out. You keep seeking the master. You keep calling on his name because you're desperate. I, I, I believe there's some desperate people in, in, in our service this morning. I believe there's some desperate people in our world today. I believe that there's some desperate people that need to let hell know this morning that I'm desperate and I'll use unusual tactics. I'll fight across the line. I'll do stuff you didn't expect because I'm desperate. I'm getting too old to play games because I'm desperate now. I'll fight you now. I'll roll around on the floor and I'll do something bad to you now because I'm desperate. Are there any desperate believers in this house this morning? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so this morning. Oh, when, I, when desperate believers start praising the Lord, the devil has to flee. Look at someone and tell them, I'm desperate. I'm desperate. You might not want to sit next to someone else who is desperate because I'm desperate. You know, I may start clapping my hands. I, I may start running up to the altar and seeking the Lord. I may stand up and raise my hands. I may shout amen. I may break out and praise the Lord because I'm desperate this morning. I've got a devil to fight. He's after my daughter. He's after my son. He's after my granddaughter. He's after my grandson. He's after my children. He's after my spouse. He's after my finances. He's after my job. He's after my country. He's after my church. I've got a devil to fight. And devil, this means war. I'm rolling up my sleeves because I'm desperate. And whatever I've got to do to get a breakthrough, I'm going to get a breakthrough. I'll mess up my hair. I'll cry off my makeup. I'll sweat out my clothes. I'm desperate for a breakthrough from the Lord this morning. This year isn't going to be like last year because I'm going the war and I will win the war because the Lord is on my side. Jericho is in my way of, in, in, in my way of possessing the promised land the Lord has for me. So I'm serving notice today. I'm given the shout of victory. I'm given the shout of praise. I'm given the shout of triumph. I'm given the shout of healing. I'm given the shout of priest. Peace. I'm given the shout of joy. I'm given the shout of a new mind. I'm given the shout of a breakthrough this morning. And I'm watching the walls come tumbling down because I'm desperate. I'm not going back 
to Egypt. I'm possessing the promised land this year. I won't go back. I'm not going back. Devil, you should have killed me when you had the chance. But I'm moving on up because I'm desperate and I've got a crazy faith and I'm seeking out the one who will set me free. Who will get me out of your clutches because I'm desperate. Oh, are you desperate this morning? Well, you see, we're going to leave that woman right there until next week. But I want you to know he's here and he's ready. He's ready. If you're desperate, if you're desperate, come and seek him. Touch the hem of his garment. You see, that woman was desperate too. Touch the hem of his garment. Let's pray together.